This is Lab 4, Circuits and Capacitors by Sajith Manigani. So the introduction for this lab, uh, the, the objective was to demonstrate the conservation of energy within uh, circuits. And to do this, we are analyzing circuit components with the, using the loop rule and the node rule. The loop rule states that for each section of wire or part of the circuit, the voltage, all the voltages will add up to zero no matter what trip you take. And then the node rule is that the current going into a node is the same as the current going out of a node. And we're also going to be looking at capacitors in the circuit when they're charged and discharged. <coughs> so part one of this lab, um, we are predict we're basically predicting the current using loop rule. And the loop rule consists of EMF plus resistance times current, which has to equal zero. And so the EMF is just the total voltage of the batteries, which is three. And then the resistance is the two resistors added up, which would be 147 times the current equal to zero. Solving for current, you get I equal 0 0.02 amps. And the ammeter shows that our prediction is also correct. And if you reverse the ammeter, it'd make the answer negative. The, if you can, if you open the circuit and then connect the voltmeter, it'll show that there's a reading of three volts, but the ammeter would be zero since it'd be considered an open circuit at that point. Uh, I'm, after measuring the potential differences around each section, you get, a, these are my readings, and then everything adds to zero, which means the loop rule is good. And then to calculate the actual resistances, I just uh, took each of the relevant sections and divided them by <clears throat> the current I to get the resistor numbers, which 47.95 and 102.05. I means my numbers were pretty close, and then my potential difference chart that I completed. Uh, the next part called for a parallel ammeter circuit, and so since the current is split between two paths, the ammeter shows a different reading. However, since there is a path to the ammeter without having to take the 100 ohm resistor, it'll create a higher current since it ha the ammeter has no resistance and it just skips the resistor. Uh, the second part of this lab called for using capacitors. And so when charging the capacitor, the, as time goes on, the light, goes, the light bulb goes from bright to dim and then the current slows down until the capacitor is fully polarized. And then for the 10, 10 ohm bulb, it took 9.4 seconds. And then the 20 ohm bulb, it was 19.2 seconds, the RCs. And so for the discharging capacitor, it was kind of the same thing once you unplug the battery. The, as time goes on, the light bulb goes from bright to dim, and then the current slows down until it stops. The current is flowing in the opposite direction, and then the capacitor goes from polarized to neutral again. So the results from that lab, when it where it called for the three volt, um, where it called for everything, the slope of, I recorded all of my values from zero to 20, the volts, and then I just used an Excel function to get the natural log of the voltage divided by V naught, which was nine. And then I plotted the data since the natural log would create a linear fit. And I took the trend line, which was just negative 0.147, that's the slope. Uh, negative one divided by that value gets us the RC value of 6.8 seconds, which is our prediction, our calculation. And then the RC expected value, which is the way you find it, is just the resistance times the uh, farads, you get six seconds. So if we were doing this lab in real life and used an actual ammeter instead of a simulated ammeter, uh, it would it would affect our circuits because a real ammeter would have a small amount of resistance, so the circuit readings would be slightly lower. Since the virtual option can be zero, like a perfect zero, it would be like the virtual option would show the higher numbers since the real one would have an actual resistance, you can't just say no resistance. And then if we were doing this lab again in real life and use an actual battery to charge a real capacitor without a circuit in this, without a resistor in the circuit, again, there would be some resistance in the real life objects since the capacitor would have to have, all the elements would have to have some resistance and in the virtual option, we could effectively negate those resistances. And so the resistance values would slow down the charging process in real life.